Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Surviving Mars. We are playing a fairly challenging setup as a Europe with our sponsor. We are a futurist, and we're playing an area that's very prone for disasters. In between episodes, as I said, I let it run for a couple of minutes here, and just to do some more scanning for us, so we got a little bit more of a head start going towards uh, whatever the heck is going to go on over here. Uh, I am going to continue to scan towards the water now. So, we've established that this area doesn't really have anything else of note. There is another source of metal down here, and it's also a very low grade, which is a bit disappointing. Um, we do have the good source of water, which is nice. We probably are going to mine this metal, despite the fact that it's very low grade. It'll be hard work. It won't come in very quickly. But a renewable source of metal will be nice. We just finished the research on soil adaptation, which is our ability to build farms as opposed to just hydroponic farms, which is great. We're now working on Explore AI, so we get a little bit more research going forward. I probably could have reordered things to be a little bit more optimized, but that's okay. All right, so what I think I'm going to end up doing is building the dome just within range of this metal so that our people can work here. The first dome, probably a lot of it will actually be research-based. At least we can make money from successfully researching, which is good. But we'll get a trickle in of metal, and what we'll probably also do is get ourselves a, um, a machine parts uh, prefab from Earth so that we can make our own machine Sector parts and we don't have to ship them over again. So hopefully that'll be okay. So the plan, let me go ahead and figure this out. If we grab our dome right now, we only have access to the basic dome. It's fairly small. We could, I could swing it over there, but it might be better to build it, say, here. Now, if we set up some concrete mines here, they do tend to kick up a fair amount of dust, but I don't think it's going to be that bad. I think we'll do something kind of like this. And I think the idea will be... I'm going to move the power cable that way. Oh, it's just off of where the water needs to go. I don't know where our water production will be. I'm going to drag something out vaguely like this. Now, we do have a water source over here. Now, you want to avoid running too many cables because they are prone to breaking. They need maintenance, and so do water pipes. But unfortunately, over here, we're going to be kind of forced to run a fairly long set of cables over here. So we're going to do that. We will be building a water extractor over here. And we're also going to be required to run some pipes back this way. Now, I do start with a vaporator, so I didn't have to necessarily set up the water source right away, but that's fine. Now, you can see a lot of this is out of range of drones, and they won't build over there, and that's that's fine. We can go and deal with that, in fact, very much now. Um, we don't have a transport either. My Sectors goodness. Can. I think we're going to call in our second shuttle right away. I think we've got no real option but to do something of that nature because we can't move resources over here. The resources that are here... Well, that's not true. What I could do is I could build another depot over here, cancel this one, and then the drones would move everything over and so on and so forth. That doesn't sound terribly convenient, though. Although it would work. Maybe we can get away with it. So I'm going to go into the infrastructure. I'll use our drone hub that we've got. And... This shuttle can reach up to here. We're going to be leaving that shuttle for a while. So I'm going to build the drone hub here, just within range of the other drone commander, so it can get built. Unfortunately, that's still going to mean that our RC Explorer is going to be out of range of anything right now. But we could land our next shuttle Dust a little further over watching. here. Uh, dust storm is starting in one soul five hours. Awesome! So that's going to cover everything in Martian dust, which means it's going to need a lot more maintenance. Um, our solar panels will... Um, not work as well with the dust storm, but you know what I can do here? I can shut off the solar panel, turn the wind turbine back on. I turned it off just, I didn't know if it would like lower the requirement of maintenance or not. I don't think it made a difference. The wind turbine will actually generate more power during the dust storm. So we'll have that running for now. Um, oh, we don't have enough power. I think what we're going to have to do, and certainly if we're going to be setting up a dome, inevitably we're going to need more wind power. So I'm going to get like a bunch of those set up. I'm going to lower the priority in the dome because the gnome, I believe, needs 15 power by itself. So basically Sector three stand. turbines will be required just to run the dome, not to mention the buildings inside, which will need a little bit more power. So we'll do something like this. This should keep this drone hub powered as well as this concrete extractor. We do have a bunch of concrete set up, but we're going to need 80 of it just for this dome here. So, you know, it's not going to be a cheap little thing. I mean, the dust storm hasn't started yet, but I don't have batteries, so the solar panels... The solar panels are mostly required to bootstrap our way into the wind turbines. I am going to avoid building too many of these on the low ground, because they're not going to give us quite the bang for a buck that we would like, but it's not going to be too, too bad. So we're going to have that. We are going to have a metal extractor back here that we'll have some people working at. It will need to be powered. So I'll 
route some power around kind of like this. Um, so yeah, it's going to have water. Okay. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're also going to want some water towers and oxygen tanks. We don't have oxygen production yet, but we'll set that up shortly. In a, in a theory, in theory, we don't really need water towers and oxygen tanks. But in practice, there's always going to be some fluctuation. There'll be things that happen. We'll get leaks in our pipes. You're going to want a little bit extra. Um, you don't. You can build them anywhere, just in case. I don't know if the um, the meteorites can actually take out cables or just damage them, um, requiring repair. I don't know if things will keep working. But it feels right to build, say, the water tower and the oxygen tank near the dome. I might end up doubling up on these. I, I tend to build one per dome, like one pair per dome. And in addition to having like maybe one extra, but we're setting up a few basics here. So when this is up and running, which it is still currently being built, these drones have to go all the way over here. Oh, I didn't actually, I was going to wait. I don't know. Drone hubs are constructed with two additional drones, but this one only got six. And I thought by default they would spawn with six. Maybe by default they spawn with four. That's possible. I thought it was six, so maybe I got the plus two, or maybe I didn't because it was prefab. I don't know. So there's still some metal over here, which is good and lovely. So this water pump is working. It will be able to produce five water per hour. This thing does scale down its production if there's no demand, so you don't drain the, the subsurface water if it's not actually in need anywhere else. That's, that symbol of being disconnected from a network will go away as soon as we got a water tower, because now, there we go, there's something connected. So the water tower will fill. Once it's filled, the water extractor will again sort of pause its work, but we won't get any kind of warning or anything about it. The oxygen tank is saying, hey, I'm not actually connected to anything producing oxygen, and I will say, you're absolutely right so i will go and there's a moisture evaporator which we can use to produce a little bit of water which is going to be important if we do need to and actually let me do that before i go any further and like run out of material and get screwed here we're going to go and get our fuel refinery up and running so i'm going to make sure it's connected in some fashion to the water pipe and i'll build it here because it'll be next to this rocket to get started fuel refinery uses water and makes fuel i think what it does is it's splitting water and making um, hydrogen based fuel uh, and it will refuel our rocket, which needs 60 fuel to re be refueled over here. So yeah, power and water, and we should have enough to spare for that, so that's going to be okay. So this will start getting refueled, which means we can start traveling back and forth. The dust storm is happening. If we zoom out, you can see, see how the high ground isn't dusty, but the low ground is? I think the dust storms only affect the area down here. So moving up to here will be very nice, but I think we made the right decision of developing here down below. And I think the dust storm will just dramatically increase the maintenance of the building. On the other hand, short term, they're also going to generate a lot more power here with the wind turbine. So, hey, bonus. Uh, you're not working because you have no people. I'm going to lower the priority over here. So if we actually, what I'm just going to do for now is I'm just going to turn you off. So you're never going to grab any power. Because with the priority, you can choose, pick and choose what buildings um, get power first, for example, if, um, if all things are equal. Um, so we will need oxygen. I don't know if we need to make it right now. Which means we also didn't need the oxygen tank right away, but then I got the place reserved and it's fine. We won't need the oxygen until people actually show up. And I think our next rocket, which we will probably launch now, will have sector other things scan. in it. Select a sector to oh, scan. we're out of sectors to scan. Um, let's do these because they will get the speed boost. You're down to 20%. There we go, 240. I mean, there's basically nothing in these sectors, reported. though. Pipe leak reported. So that will happen. We'll need a piece of metal to go and fix it, most likely. And while that's leaking, we are losing water and oxygen, which really bites. And that's one of the reasons you want the water supply over here. I don't think it matters where it happens. It's, you know, it's gonna, you're gonna lose just as much oxygen regardless. So it, I don't think it's anything relative to where we build things or anything like that. It just sucks that it has to happen. Okay, so with our rocket, what I'm thinking, so we're gonna request a cargo rocket over here. We need prefab buildings. I'm going to request a machine parts factory so we can start making our own. We will want an electronics factory soon, but maybe not yet. I think I'm going to ask for another drone hub because we actually don't have the tech yet to be able to start building our own. We can live without moist evaporators because we still have one to spare and we've got two underground water deposits, although one's kind of sucky. We will actually unlock the tech for fuel refineries in a moment, so we don't need to ship that. Sterling generators make a lot of power, but I think we're okay. So I will want an electronics factory, but I don't strictly need it right now. So I might wait on that because we, we're going to need people to work that. I would like one RC rover and one RC transport. 
I want this new rocket that I go with, I'm going to have to give it at least one drone, so it can operate a drone from where it is. Although, you can always move drones as well. Well, let's see if I end up with, like, some spare change at the end here. I'm going to load up, even though we're going to be producing our own machine parts soon, I'm going to load up a few more, and a few electronics and a few polymers here. Especially the electronics, because we're a little further from being able to do anything like that. There we go. And one drone. I think I'm fairly pleased with this. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. We could preload some extra food, but I think that's going to be fine. I'm out of cargo capacity. I still have money, which is a good sign. I'll be able to send at least one more rocket with more resources. So the rocket's going to take a little while to get um, from, uh, from Earth to here. So I don't know. The rocket names are randomized, but I think they might be randomized by a sponsor. When I did a, a little playthrough, I tested on my own playing as Paradox. My first rocket was called Glitterhoof. So... Paradox. Alright, so you don't have anything. This dome is starting to come together. Man, everything's red and dusty and terrible. Oh, the maintenance is going to be apocalyptically bad here with all these dust storms. Achieved. We Yay! Have an oxygen shortage. Oxygen shortage. Well, not really. Just this dome is complaining it doesn't have oxygen. And, you know, fair enough. Explorer AI is done. Are we getting it? No. So we're not getting science from our explorers right now because it is shut down. Okay. What did this reveal? Oh, the ability to build our own drone hubs. Well, we already have a prefab on the way, and that's all right. Unlocking this technology soon will be good. Unlocking more space for our cargo. You know what? I'm going to do this just because it's a really cheap research. We'll reveal... Every time you research a tech, by the way, it reveals one more tech in the category. Um, so we'll see what else comes up, and every tech we get gives us a little bit of cash. If you do have extra money to spend, you can also outsource to get more research done um very 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 quickly but we don't have that kind of money we've got to save our money for at least one other refueling rocket from uh from earth so i'm gonna go ahead and for now i'm gonna power this off so that everything else keeps getting the juice but clearly we're gonna need some more power overall um and i think i am in the interest of like limiting our cost of some of the more advanced resources i am going to build a few more solar panels and then some batteries I think that's going to be okay. So technically, the small ones are actually slightly more power for the cost. So one metal for two power as opposed to four metal for five power. The difference is going to be in the long-term maintenance. The so large solar panels um, will need, you know... So you're getting basically two and a half small panels worth over here, but only two maintenance worth. I think in the long run, this is going to be substantially cheaper to maintain. Also, I'm not sure if the small solar panels get um, all the upgrades. They probably do. So we're going to do that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to build two power accumulators over here so we can load up these batteries during the day from the solar panel income and do that. Hopefully we get some spare power, and we'll see. Anomaly Push comes to shelf, we can sell ourselves a sterling generator. More anomalies. we got no shortage of those. We just have a shortage of functioning. Meteor shower um, incoming. Meteor shower incoming. Yay! Well, let's keep researching the faster districts to at least find anomalies. I've had my, like, random explorers, or actually it was an, a, one of the RC drones, one of the things that can r fix things remotely, get smacked by a meteor and get disabled with, like, no real good way to fix it. That was very frustrating. Meteors are bad, as it turns out. So you still got a little bit of surface metal that you're using, which is good. These things have all been built up. They're turned off, but ready to start accepting people sooner rather than later. Um... I'm going to wait until the next rocket comes, like, and deliver some goods and make sure this is all running and we're collecting our anomalies again. Oh, we're here now. So I'm going to drop this one off. I mean, we're going to have to move some goods. Maybe... I'm trying to avoid... Oh, we got the RC rover, actually. I'm forgetting that. So we really can end up putting these things more or less anywhere. Uh, so I'll go... I'll go down here, because it'll actually be within range of some extra metal down here. That's going to be fine. But we did get an RC rover, right? So I'm going to be able to send it out there. I guess I could have double-checked the cargo on this ship, which I really should have done, but I'm pretty sure I did. Meteor storm. God damn it. <laughs> oh, it's not going to be great. Yeah, very good. So the RC rover is a mobile command unit for drones. It has a very small radius, but you can move it, which means I can move it over here to be within range of the Explorer, so it gets fixed. And it's just picking up its drone, and then it's going to go over there. And the RC transport can be used to load goods from anything, including, say, a rocket, and it can then unload it anywhere. It can unload it on the ground or in an existing stockpile. Yeah, so what I'll do here is probably just say, hey, dump it near the dome. That's fine. Just dump it over there. We're going to be okay. All right. So we're going to wait for this to get reloaded. I'm going to just lower the, the 
um, the priority on this one, just to make sure the fuel is all going here. Although it should just by virtue of proximity. So to set up our home over here, we don't have access to apartments. So we're going to be using living quarters. So that can fit 14 people. Our first rocket load is going to have 12 people. Tell you what, we'll put it at the top. So that's going to be fine. And what else are going to be want? Well, I, I really do think we'd like to start with the farm. You can do the hydroponics. It needs a lot more power. You can see the farm doesn't use any power at all. The difference is, A, in the amount of food they make, and the hydroponics is also a lot smaller, whereas the farm takes up a whole wedge. But I think that's going to be okay here. Once it gets built, we'll be able to choose what kind of crops it produces. And I would really like for us to start developing machine parts in-house right away. So we are going to need some workers at the metal extractor. It's four per shift. You can't have more than one shift going on. We're going to need some workers here. I think it might be six, which is quite a lot. And we're also going to need some at the farm. The farm only has one shift. You can change when the shift is, but it'll only have the requirement for one person. So it's not too shabby. Um, I'm going to turn that off for now as well. So it's only five. Oh, my God. I think that is just going to miss us. But Oh, my God. We are getting smacked. Ah! Now... Because of our upgrade to the sensor tower, it doesn't need maintenance. I believe what happens when you get hit by a meteorite, it just sets your maintenance requirement to 100%. So it's turned off until it's fixed. I think the sensor towers might be immune to meteorites. That is very funny. All right, our farm is done. By default, it sets wheat as the first crop, uh, which is quite fast to grow, but it's relatively low yield. I actually like that as our very first crop. Make sure we get some food right away. I'm then going to start growing soybean. No, sorry. Meteor. Wheat first, then I'm going to start growing soybeans. They get lower yield, although we're not going to have that many people, so it's okay, but they also improve the quality of the soil. Quality soil starts at 50%. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. If we zoom out, we can actually see like the impacts all over the map. Usually the meter shower is located to a particular area, and it looks like we just, we just like rolled badly here in that this meteor shower is right on top of us. This meteor shower could have been over here and we would have been unaffected. Logi Hydrosynthesis is this over here, right? The polymer and fuel refinery. Work on a transport optimization. What's next? Oh, apartment buildings. Which we will want. Fits twice as many people. They're not as comfortable. It takes a fair amount of materials as well. I think we're going to be fine early on with just the living quarters. So we got that. Um, very important buildings early on to make people okay in terms of happiness. Um, you can include something like a grocer, which satisfies people's need to get food that isn't just what they call raw food. Like if food by itself is just sitting out there, it's not very interesting. This provides like ready-made hot meals and fresh uh, fruit and veg in a way that's nicely accessible. So it makes people happy and survives, uh, fulfills a couple of their desires. These little three size buildings, so you can put three in a wedge like this and there's just enough room for a little one hex tile over here. So we're gonna put down a small park. This park will satisfy people's needs for relaxation, exercise and playing. When we get more people in the dome, not that this is a very big dome, but once we get more people in the dome, this one park might not be enough. Ah! Oh! oh, and it actually does take out the pipes completely. Game, why are you being like this? Do I even have enough material to replace all this stuff? Oh, 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 oh there's another one coming too. Guys. Oh my god. It's like my buildings are being targeted. Mm, I'm not going to lie. We might end up restarting this on a less disastrous location. Oh my god, this is terrible. <laughs> Why would we choose this as our first site? Hey, free metal. Why would we choose this as our first site? Oh my god, that's just waste rock as well. And I love the little crater impact. Hey, more free metal. Who needs a metal mine? Uh, how's this rocket coming? Eh, it's two-thirds of the way done being refueled. <laughs> oh! Uh, oh yeah, my uh, my explorer, you uh, you can go and get some power here. And then I'm going to send you out to check these anomalies. Well, tell you what, like this one over here. Please try to get murdered by falling rocks. It's another, like, day and a bit of these rocks coming at us. And it really is, like, right where we are. Maybe they're happening somewhere else and we can't see them, but I'm pretty sure we would. I think this is really just localized over here. Cable fault reported. Oh, God. Anomaly found. <laughs> well, that one dropped an anomaly for us, though. How kind. I mean, I guess that would be the upside. Look how much metal we're going to use just, like, repairing this constantly. Um, my RC rover is broken. 
We've just found the wreckage of Phobos 2. The old probe oh, cool. has some new data for us to analyze. So we even launched the probes. Oh, that's neat. Hint, locations of several anomalies discovered. Anomaly found. Nifty. So my oh my god, this RC rover is just outside of my range for my drones to fix it. I mean, I suppose I could put a drone hub over here, but it feels a little bit wasteful. I can't believe it just got smashed. I've had this for like two seconds. It's like you just bought a new car, and on your way out of the dealership, you get obliterated. So you guys are complaining you don't have access to water. It's the root. This was ruined. I actually have to ask for it to be rebuilt. Not just repaired, but rebuilt. Oh, for crying out loud. This is terrible. <laughs> oh, man. Research complete. All right. Fuel compression. Good. Um, there's like a thing you can get later to protect you from uh, laser bombs, but... I think we're going to need the drone hub tech pretty fast. We don't need the apartments that fast. Fuel compression is going to be nice so we can bring more things. But yeah, we're going to need to build more. Oh my god. Please tell me you can't destroy my rockets. Please tell me at least you can't destroy my rockets. Oh my god, this is so terrible. I mean, at least we get a fair amount of free metal. <laughs> All right, I am going to go. This is going to eat more power. I'm going to go and build a drone hub over here. So it's, I'm going to put it right on the edge of the other drone hub just to extend our range. I don't know if this one's going to be that active depending on what we build over here, but we kind of need to get the RC rover fixed. One of our drones attached to the RC rover was also obliterated. It's only got three. It started with four. I, incoming. Of course you are. I'm, I'm going to say, I may not want to send the Explorer out of range. Although, the, the RC rover is going to be fixed in a second, so no, it's okay. <laughs> oh, at least it hadn't been built yet, because it would have just taken a bunch more damage. Our people are going to die! Meteor incoming. I do want to get people soon, though. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to set up a sector Moxie. Scanned. Anomaly found. Select over here. Sector to scan. Um, and I think I will drop down the moisture evaporator as well. Because we do need a little bit more water. We need some for the farm. We need some for the fuel refinery. And of course we need some for the, the dome itself. We need to select sectors to scan again. Do we have a speed boost over here? No, just the 20% by virtue of the fact that we have two things. There's not much to scan over here, but we'll do that. And what I'm going to end up doing... We've just confirmed the location of a metal-rich deposit. Oh! A drilling accident turned to our advantage. Nice. Oh, right over here! Oh, that's swell. Um, let's get this. I should have enough power to do this and get back. So, I want to set up more scanning towers, and I think I want to get in this general direction, because there's some water and good stuff. So, we don't need power, but we do need a little bit of material. So, what we're going to do is, I'm going to move the drone vehicle over here. Now, I'm going to try to keep it within range of our other drone hub, which is located... Did I not put down a drone hub? I guess I just have this. Yeah, I've got these two. Oh, this is going to be a little daring, but okay. I'm going to come over here. So the idea will be you are going to build a sensor tower. Now, you're going to need metal. You're also going to need electronics. So my transport, which is here, you're going to grab electronics. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's enough. You're going to go over here. Now, I don't remember if this will... So there was metal around, so you grab that, which is fine. I don't know if you will automatically grab... If the drones will automatically grab it from this. Oh, it will. How grand is that? And while you're here, I can tell you to go and collect, say, this metal. Now, I'm going to send the RC rover back home. So if it gets smacked by something, it can get repaired. I don't want this to get obliterated out of range again. There's more to the barren environs of the red planet nice. than meets the eye. So some of the anomalies unlock a bunch more research. They don't give you the research for free, but they let you see more. So with the ability to build our own scanning probes, um, right, water reclamation, this booster vaporators. Logi fungi is a good way to make food. We do have the farming, though. Rockets and shuttles require less fuel. It seems like the earlier we build this, like, the happier we'll be. RC rover no longer needs recharging is awfully nice. 
Life from Mars, more applicants. I think we'll go ahead and queue this up. I'll leave the, the low G high rise and the drone hub, the ability to build our own drone hub buildings is going to be very, very swell. So you're filling yourself up with metal. If you get smacked out there, it's not so bad because we can always uh, fix you up with our little RC rover. And my explorer, I'm going to tell it to come here and recharge because it's quite low. Okay. So if I turn this on, like what's our power? hugely negative it is at night so that's not going to help either and our but our batteries here are deflating very quickly yes they're inflatable batteries so we are going to need quite a bit more juice how do i want to do it well first of all some things could actually be turned off at night i don't want to refine fuel at night and this of course only runs during one shift during the day We'll need the water all the time. I mean, I suppose they could turn off the water at night, and we could just go off our, our storage, our stores, but I don't think that's a good idea. That already improves things a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to build another series of wind turbines, though. Sector scanned. I think I'll just build a bunch over here. Oops. Hold shift. If you put, like, a little one gapper like that, you can then go and do this. So this is going to add an extra 20. I think I'm going to go ahead and do something like that. So that's an extra 35 power. It's quite a lot. And again, we need ma machine parts for maintenance there. We should be able to start producing some soon, but we are running awfully low. You know what? I might... What do we need to maintain batteries? Polymers. Not that we have a ton of those either. But maybe I'll actually throw in a few more solar panels after all. Like that. Okay. So we got our surplus now. Of course, not everything is running, but... Uh, the machine parts factory eats a fair amount 30 power while this is running now i think it only eats the power so we're at plus 11 we don't have a shift running right now if i turn this off yeah it only eats power while there's a shift actually using it and that's going to be in the during the day while we've got more solar panels <gasps> this rocket is full of fuel thank you we're going to launch you off and once you get to earth i think we're going to yeah, send you achieved. So, send you some uh with back with some people so for a moment there, we had uh, some exiled or orphaned drones. The drones that were attached to this building important. will automatically try to attach themselves to the closest other thing. So three of them ended up going to um, the Alvaril 2, uh, and a couple of them attached themselves to the RC rover. Remember, this has gotten down to three, so now it's back up to five. So the drones try to, like, reestablish themselves somewhere else, so they're not wasted, the ones you send with a rocket. Now... You don't necessarily need a ton of drones in any place. You can take a look at the drone load at any given time. It gives you an idea of how many of them are active versus being idle. Over here, most of them are going to be idle quite often. Here, they're going to be very idle a lot. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these. And I'm just going to find my little rover. I'm going to right-click on you. So there we go. So now you're at three of or six of eight. You know what? I forgot that you can have up to eight. So I'm going to grab another one from there. And actually, I'm going to grab one from over here and put you there as well. I'm hoping at some point there's a better interface for... Uh, reassigning these drones sort of in bulk over here, but it turns out it's not something you do as often as I thought you'd have to worry about uh, initially. Later on, you do get the ability to build extra drones as well, so if you need more drones somewhere, you don't tend to reassign them as much as just like build more drones in that particular place once you got a drone fabricator. Okay, power's good, just waiting for the rocket, and I think we'll put a cut in here, but I think next episode is going to start with us loading up some passengers and bringing them over to Mars and hoping that everything is okay. We're going to start you up again. We've got a lot of excess power. We've got tons of batteries as well. I mean, I may have overdone it in the power. Hopefully, you know, we, we aren't going to run too low on too many of these materials. But so far, so good. This thing is empty right now, just waiting to be fueled up. And that will be very important. We actually may want to consider, may want to consider delaying our people until this rocket is ready to go because we will very likely need to get some more parts very quickly because what can happen is if you run out of some part and then something needs maintenance then um oh i guess that solar panel has been turned off for a while uh and now needs to be fixed um something needs maintenance and we don't have the part so it just stays off but other things rely on that thing being like if we start running out of you know power generators and everything you know grinds to a halt and then you can have all your people die um so we may actually want to wait until this thing is more fueled up before we actually send anyone, just so that we can pull in missing stuff. On the other hand, the longer we wait, the more of these resources we're going to use doing nothing just by virtue of deterioration. So, well, we'll put a cut in here. Next time, one way or another, we're going to get people over here. Thanks for watching. See you then.